Hey, physicists. <clears throat> so I wanted to point out that at least at the beginning here, I'm using some stuff that's in your OneNote class notebook and that we are in the unit two vectors and motion folder um, and that we are looking here at the con uh, virtual learning 18th August page. And so you can see a lot of worked examples here. And most of these worked examples are with one dimensional motion or even one dimensional vectors, okay? Um, two dimensional stuff I'm gonna work on giving you guys some practice with tomorrow. And then uh, Friday, I'm hoping to get you guys into a virtual lab to work on um, looking at some free fall and some projectile motion. So um, with these documents, I have posted on here as well for you some reminders about uh, how we can do word problems and solve word problems. So I want to remind you about cubes. And with cubes, you want to circle the numbers. Some might be irrelevant. So maybe you can think as you're reading the problem whether those numbers are important or not. You want to underline the question, how many, what volume, what is the mass, box keywords eliminate extraneous information and solve the problem. When we get down to solve the problem, I'm going to switch off one note and show you guys how I would work through some of these and what kinds of stuff I would be writing down from these word problems. So this first one up here, this example with Danica Patrick on May 29th, 2005. Well, that could be an important number. We'll come back to that. If we're given a date, Sometimes we might be looking for the number of days since something happened, so we don't know yet. That could be important. So on that date, Danica Patrick was named the first female Indy 500 Rookie of the Year after her fourth place finish. <clears throat> so Indy 500, that's part of the name. I'm not going to circle that fourth place finish. I mean, that is a number. We'll come back and see if that's important. The best Indy 500 finish of any woman in the event's history. Danica completed the race in a time of 3.174 hours. Well, that sure is a number, right? What was Danica's average speed during the 500 mile race? Uh oh, miles. You'll see there's a note down below that <clears throat> we don't try, we try not to use miles in physics, but here's the question. Note generally the unit miles is not used in physics exercises. However, the Indianapolis 500 is a race that is measured in miles. So the mile is more appropriate here, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we've circled all the numbers we could circle, right? So what else are we supposed to do? Well, we're supposed to underline the question. So what's the question here? What was Danica's average speed? So what was Danica's average speed? during the 500 mile race. Box keywords, are there any other keywords in here? Well, I mean, we've got time, right? Um, I don't see any other keywords, do you? Maybe completed, um, could be a keyword. So you know that it's finished. Eliminate extraneous information. So did we need the date? Did we need to know her finishing place? No. So all of this other stuff, including fourth place, is extraneous. It's just maybe helping us con uh, connect to the question better. And it doesn't even really matter that it's a race, okay, for the question. So looking at the key information that we have, then we would go forward and solve the question. We'll come back to that when I switch over to my document camera. Okay, so go ahead and on your own, go ahead and think about what you're supposed to be doing in cubes, circling the numbers, underlining the question, boxing keywords, eliminating extraneous information, and think about how you would mark up example five. So go ahead and pause the video and think about how you would mark up example five. This is your last chance to pause. 
Okay, so as you read this question, Grace is driving her sports car at 30 meters per second. That's going to be a number we're going to circle. When a ball rolls out into the street in front of her, Grace slams on the brakes and comes to a stop in three seconds. What was the acceleration of Grace's car? Okay. And keywords that you would want to box. So, I mean, um, she is driving maybe. So that gives you the idea that she's moving forward. When she slams on the brakes and comes to a stop, that could be a keyword because that's telling you that she is actually slowing down, okay? And so that would be important to know for the question. Everything else here right now is extraneous, okay? Everything else is extraneous in the fact that it's a car, okay? So 30 meters per second, driving 30 meters per second comes to a stop in three seconds. And three, I think I eliminated, but you could say that's a linking word to the three seconds. So that's how you should, should be thinking about marking up word problems so that you can find information on them. So now I'm gonna switch over to the document camera and show you how I would work through and solve these. All right, so with the Danica Patrick question, this was example two. We are looking for the average speed. So you could see this as a V. Remember V normally means velocity. V normally means velocity, but if we don't put the arrow over the top to symbolize that it's a vector, then we could mean that this is the scalar for speed. You could also do an AV or an AVG down here to represent average, okay? That's our unknown. What's her average speed over the 500 miles? Well, we're given her distance, right? We know that the race is 500 miles long. MI would be miles again. And we know how long it takes her to complete the race. So we would know delta T, which is 3.174 hours, okay? Now, as I said, when you're solving equation-based questions, you wanna always wanna show the original equation that you're starting from, okay? Now, for me right now, the original equation would actually be the definition of speed, right? So the definition of speed is the distance divided by the time. And so because that's a definition we know for speed, we can definitely start from that. And I don't know if I've lost my, yeah, okay, the camera is still there. So show the original equation and then show that equation with numbers plugged into it. Notice that in this case, both of these numbers have four significant figures. And then when you do the math here, 500 miles divided by 3.174 hours gives me 157.52993 miles per hour. But again, thinking about four significant figures, we can only keep to that first decimal place here because that would be our fourth digit. And so our final answer would be 157.5 miles per hour. And you would wanna circle that. So that's how I would work through the Danica Patrick question. How I would work through the other question, Grace's driving a sports car. This was example five. She is moving forwards 
That's a sports car, right? Zoom, zoom, zoom. She is moving forwards with a speed, okay, of 30 miles per second. And so we could draw that as a picture. Does it really matter right now whether she's going to the right or the left? No. So um, this is a speed, not necessarily a velocity, but um, if everything's in the same direction, then usually they're kind of interchangeable. And you can think of velocities as speeds because they are speeds. They're just in a specific direction. What we know is that a ball is going to roll out somewhere in front of her, right? The lights went out on me again. So let me pause and wave my arm. The ball rolls out somewhere in front of her and she has to stop. She slams on the brakes. What does this mean? This means that at some point, her velocity or her speed is gonna to have to be zero, right? For her to not hit the ball, she's gonna to have to get to a velocity of zero. Well, what is it gonna take for her to change her velocity? For her velocity that's coming forward to become zero, for her velocity to change, think about the definition of, um, think about the definition of change in velocity over time. What's that equivalent to? Hopefully you said acceleration, okay? And in fact, that's what this question is asking for, right? Acceleration. So it might be helpful to think about the definition of acceleration here. Well, we know her initial velocity or her initial speed is 30 meters per second. Let's take that as having two significant figures for now, okay? And we know that her final velocity needs to be zero meters per second. If she comes to a stop, that means she's not moving. So whether you're looking at velocity or speed, that should be zero. Then again, we have the definition of acceleration here. So we can think about acceleration being equal to the change in velocity over time. That's the other thing we have too, right, is time. We know that the time is 3.0 seconds. Change in velocity, final minus initial, the final is zero, minus 30 meters per second over three seconds. What's zero minus 30? Negative 30 divided by three. 30 divided by three is? 10, so this gives us negative 10, okay, meters per, what happens here when we have meters per second and we're dividing by seconds? Well, that's going to give us two seconds in the denominator, right? But that's going to be squared, not just times two. So acceleration will always be meters per second squared if we're in SI units. What is the psi mean? Well, the psi means that her acceleration is in the opposite direction of her motion. For her to change her velocity so that she stops, she actually has to be applying an acceleration that's in the negative direction, okay? In order for her to stop her car. Now, if she didn't have the brakes, what else could happen that would cause a negative acceleration? Well, if she ran into something and that exerted a force back on her, that would also cause her to have a negative acceleration or an acceleration in the direction opposite to the direction she was moving in. So this is how I would solve those particular problems. Now, if you take a look and you'll see in the assignment actually for today, we've already worked over exercises one and two on page 13. What you want to continue to work on, and I'll show you one more example here, kind of working through the whole thing. What you want to continue to work on is questions three, five, six, seven, and eight. So that's eight questions from this one dimensional motion set. 
Now, you also want to think about applying some of what you've already learned about vectors, okay? And we're not going to do two-dimensional vectors yet in this problem set. So you want to look back over perhaps these solved examples that I took screenshots of for you. These will all be one-dimensional vectors, so only along the same axis. And in the practice exercises, you want to go ahead and work through exercises one through five. So the one about Antarctic explorers, Eric and Erica and Tori swimming off of a boat, horses entering the gate, Shireen driving a motorboat in two different directions with the stream. So for that one, keep in mind that the stream or the river current will be a constant speed in a single direction. And five is Rochelle flying on a plane, okay? So those five with vectors and three, five, six, seven, and eight with the uh, chapter two stuff in this workbook, which are all on pages 14 and 15. And the vector ones are pages 26 through 28, but only examples one through five, exercises one through five. And I'll post those numbers as an assignment, homework assignment.